My name is Stan Graf. Um, I am uh, a clinical and research psychiatrist. I was born and educated in, in Prague, Czechoslovakia, and uh, I came to this country when I was 37. I came first on a scholarship, which was to Johns Hopkins. Uh, for a year, and then as I was here, it was extended for another year. And then during the second year, the uh, uh, Soviet Union uh, invaded Czechoslovakia, and everybody who was outside was asked to go back, and uh, I refused to go back. And... Transversal psychology differs from uh, traditional psychology in what it adds to the understanding of the psyche. Transpersonal psychology includes actually um, traditional approaches to psychology, but it differs in its, uh, in its philosophy. So um, the best way you can describe it is to use what Frances Vaughan said. She said that what defines a transpersonal psychologist is not the content of what they work with, but their large context. Yeah. You see, their model of the psyche is much larger than the traditional. Traditional psychology has a model which is limited to uh, what we can call postnatal uh, biography, things that happened to us after we were born. Um, it does not uh, include uh, even birth, you know, which is a very important, very major event in human life. It doesn't include uh, uh, the prenatal uh, uh, experience, which we now know is very important for, for psychology. And it also has a very narrow understanding of uh, what Freud described as the unconscious. Basically, um, stays with the Freudian understanding that the unconscious is basically a derivative of, uh, of postnatal biography. It includes things that we have forgotten, that we have rejected, that we found unacceptable. Um, it's a kind of a uh, junkyard of, of rejects of individual uh, biography, whereas the transpersonal understanding includes the collective unconscious, the, the way Jung described it. You know, both in the historical aspect, which means that the, the history of humanity is still uh, with us, is still recorded in the, in the collective unconscious. And it also includes um, what Jung would have called archetypal aspects, mythological aspects of uh, the collective unconscious. say that transpersonal psychology is a system of thinking that uh, covers the whole spectrum of uh, human experience, which includes what we call uh, non-ordinary uh, states of consciousness, which means experiences, uh, for example, that you find in uh, shamans in the kind of initiatory crisis, but also uh, something that they, the shamans experience uh, themselves or that they induce in their clients where they are doing healing. Uh, Non-ordinary states are also states uh, experienced by native cultures as part of their ritual life, particularly um, so-called rites of passage, you know, powerful rituals enacted at the time of important uh, transitions such as birth, circumcision, puberty, uh, menopause, uh, of course dying. Uh, those are experiences that were described uh, by the initiates and the ancient mysteries in the Mediterranean area and elsewhere. Uh, these are experiences described by mystics of all ages and uh, also by uh, yogis and by, by practitioners of some other spiritual disciplines, uh, various schools of Buddhism, Taoism, uh, Sufism, uh, you know, uh, Christian mysticism and so on. Now, what's what's uh, 
I think very specific for transpersonal psychology is that it not only studies these states, but they, that uh, transpersonal psychologists uh, hold these states in great esteem, which was the case for all ancient and pre-industrial cultures, uh, whereas uh, traditional uh, academic mainstream uh, psychology, psychiatry might have studied somewhat these states, but they basically um, discard them as, uh, as something that's pathological, that's coming out of uh, brain pathology, something that's not useful for anything. Whereas transpersonal psychology has shown that these states are, uh, uh, if they're properly understood, properly supported, that they are actually healing, that they are transformative and uh, even in a sense uh, uh, evolutionary. So transpersonal psychology honors the ritual and spiritual life uh, of uh, other cultures that uh, Western psychiatry and psychology tend to pathologize and see spirituality as a very, very important, very critical dimension, not just in the human psyche, but also in the universal scheme of things. <laughs> I think we can, we can look at the history of uh, 20th century uh, psychology where the first half of it was really dominated by two schools, primarily by behaviorism and by um, uh, Freudian psychoanalysis. Behaviorism is something that came out of the work of uh, the Nobel Prize winning physio Russian physiologist Ivan Petrovich Pavlov and also the work of uh, John Watson, it's a system of psychology that basically wanted to use as more or less exclusive uh, source of data behavior, uh, which is you know, observable behavior, and exclude any kind of introspective data, exclude uh, consciousness, something very, very uniquely uh, human. Uh, and Freudian psychoanalysis you know, is based on uh, the work of Freud and his followers, which had to do primarily with the discovery of uh, uh, the unconscious, that we just, uh, the psyche is not limited to uh, our conscious processes, but there is this uh, very important domain that in ordinary life uh, has a very strong influence on us, but becomes uncon uh, uh, remains unconscious. And uh, then also the, uh, the discovery uh, that Freud made um, of the extent to which we are influenced by very early memories of our life, right? what, that, what happened in infancy, in uh, childhood, uh, not just in later life. So in the middle of the 20th century, uh, there was increasing dissatisfaction with the limitations of these two schools uh, that dominated uh, Western psychology. And the main spokesman of this movement became Abraham Maslow, a very, very well-known uh, American psychologist. And he formulated very, very sharp criticism of both behaviorism and uh, Freudian psychoanalysis. His main objection against uh, behaviorism was that it was uh, drawing its um, information uh, exclusively from uh, the work with uh, animals, uh, primarily rats and pigeons. And uh, his uh, objection was that by studying rats and pigeons, you can learn about uh, just about the functions that we share with these animals. And uh, there's no way you can use that information to understand some of the higher psychological functions and your specifically human characteristics. Uh, uh, ethics, uh, aesthetics, you know, art, uh, literature, uh, science, uh, uh, religion. Um, he also uh, objected against the fact that behaviorism left out introspection and uh, consciousness as uh, uh, areas of study. As far as uh, Psychoanalysis is concerned, his main objection was that uh, the information for uh, creating theories in psychoanalysis come primarily from uh, um, emotional disorders.
My name is Stan Graf. Um, I, am, I came first on a scholarship, which was to Johns Hopkins, uh, for a year. And then, as I was here, it was extended for another year. And then during the second year, the uh, uh, Soviet Union uh, invaded Czechoslovakia, and everybody who was outside was asked to go back uh, as a clinical and research psychiatrist. I was born and educated in, in Prague, Czechoslovakia, and uh, I came to this country when I was 37. Transpersonal psychology differs from uh, traditional psychology in what it adds to the understanding of the psyche. Transpersonal psychology includes actually um, traditional approaches to psychology, but it differs in its uh, in its philosophy. So.